Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this damn mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Okay, <clears throat> number, um, what is he, 45, uh, Nutsy Cuckoo, um, the person that is giving the, uh, the, the country a lesson in what it's like to be gaslit by a narcissist. Um, the latest on him is he, Donald Trump, refuses to hand over diplomat's wife to UK authorities after she killed a teen in a road accident and fled to the US. Despite a phone call from the UK President Prime Minister Boris Johnson, he but he says that he wants her to meet the victim's family for some healing. Harry Dunn died after being knocked down outside the US intelligence base in the United Kingdom. The wife of a spy who allegedly knocked him down after later fled the United Kingdom for the United States. Ann Skula, 42, had diplomatic immunity as a result of her husband's work. Boris Johnson phoned the president to ask for diplomatic immunity to be waived. Trump spoke publicly about the case for the first time and rebuffed Mr. Johnson's plea. Instead, he suggested that he help arrange for a meeting between the families for some healing. He also said that he had driven on the wrong side of the road and you know you have to be careful when you in London and a lot of us ain't used to all right Donald Trump today publicly rebuffed a plea from Boris Johnson to waive diplomatic immunity for an American woman suspected of killing British teenager instead suggesting that the victim's family meet her in the US for some healing Larry Dunn, 19, was killed when his motorbike, what is this, when his motorbike, Lord have mercy, I can't believe it, um, crashed into a car on August 27th, and the suspect in the case, 42-year-old Ann School, is reportedly married to a U.S intelligence official fled to the U.S. despite telling the police that she wouldn't. His family have been desperately trying to ensure Mrs. Skoulis the return to the U.K. to participate in the police investigation. And this evening, Mr. Johnson urged the president to help ensure uh, her diplomatic immunity is waived. It has been suggested that the vehicle which hit Harry had been traveling on the wrong side of the road after pulling out from a raft crossing in North Hampshire. But Mr. Trump, speaking publicly for the first time about the case, said that after the phone call, he would not send Mrs. Scholars back to the UK and suggested that he himself had driven on the wrong side of the road. And he added, well, you know, that can happen. The meeting came after Harry's family from Oxfordshire met with Foreign Secretary Dominique Robb this afternoon, but slammed the meeting as a publicity stunt, and it left them very angry and frustrated. Afterwards, Mr. Johnson spoke with the president in a phone call to personally ask him to reconsider the U.S. position and grant immunity to Ms. Schooler. Trump called it a very complex issue, adding, we're going to speak to her very shortly and do something where they meet. We're going to speak to her and see if we can come up with something that is so there is some healing. <laughs> Trump acknowledged that a tragedy had occurred and described Mrs. Scholes, who he did not name, as driving on the wrong side of the road then suggested that he had done the same thing where he has two golf courses as if that's oh well you know i've done it before too so you know it's okay i get it you know it's easy to kill somebody and don't forget i'm i'm immune for to any kind of prosecution and so is anybody that roll with me 
those are the opposite those are the opposite roads that can happen he said i won't say it ever happened to me but it did wow, God. when you get used to driving in on our system and you're all of a sudden on another system and where you're driving it happens you have to be careful he acknowledged that the u.s public opinion was also likely to be in favor of scholars being stripped of diplomatic um, immunity. Mm -mm. I understand where the people from the UK feel. And frankly, a lot of Americans feel the same way, he said. But the person that was driving the automobile has diplomatic immunity. It was an accident, a terrible accident. Dunn's family met with UK Foreign Secretary Dominique Rabb this afternoon, but publicly slammed the meeting and said it was a publicity stunt. A Downey Street spokesperson revealed conversation between the Prime Minister and Mr. Trump and that they did, they confirmed they did have taken place. He said the two leaders discussed the tragic death of Harry Dunn, 19. The Prime Minister urged the President to reconsider the U.S. position so the individual involved in the crash can return to the U.K., cooperate with the police, and allow Harry's family to receive justice. The president said he was fully aware of the case and deeply saddened by what has happened, and he expressed his condolences to Harry's parents. The leaders agreed to work together to find a way forward as soon as possible. This afternoon, Mr. Rabb met Harry's mother, Charlotte Charles, and father, Tim Dunn, who earlier said that they had been in limbo after Mrs. Scholas had fled to the U.S. But speaking after the meeting, Harry's mother, Charlotte Charles, said, I'm disgusted and feel like I've been let down by both governments. Nothing useful came out of this meeting with Dominique Rabb, although he engaged with us, I felt like it's just a publicity stunt. Mr. Dunn added, we feel extremely let down. The really disappointing thing is that it seems that it's okay to kill a young lad and then a walk away from him just because you have diplomatic immunity. Asked about his son by reporters, Mr. Dunn became emotional and was supported by his family as he called him a special young man. He was a special boy. The beautiful lad. So many friends. He loved life. He loved his motorbikes. He loved his football. He didn't have a bad bone in his body. He just loved his family. He just loved everything. He was a special boy, and I miss him like mad. The couple were accompanied by their lawyer, Rad Sager, who echoed the Dunn family disappointed at the outcome of the meeting with the Rad. With, with Mr. Rapp. Giving a statement on behalf of the family, he said, to say that we are disappointed with the outcome would be an understatement. We are frustrated and we are angry. He added, before the meeting, we were led to believe that something positive would come out of this. But all Mr. Rapp made clear to us is that the Americans insist that Mrs. Scholas has full diplomatic immunity and under no circumstances are they going to grant a waiver. Our position is that she does not have diplomatic immunity and must return to Britain to face the consequences of her actions. Wow. And I, and I agree. Mrs. Charles also said, I can't really see the point we were invited to see Dominic Rapp. We are no further forward than we were in this time last week. Although he is engaging with us, we have no answers. We are really frustrated that we could spend half an hour or more with him and just come out with nothing. The lawyer for Mrs. Dunn's family said that they were engaging lawyers to take a civil case against Ann Scholas in the U.S. Our position is that she doesn't have immunity and that the waivers are always granted in these circumstances, Brad Seegert told reporters in Westminster on Wednesday. Now we can disclose to you we have brought lawyers on board. 
we are going to Washington soon to help us get the justice for Harry. The Dunn family have hired leading lawyers Mark Stevens and Jeffrey Robertson, who specialize in dip dip diplomatic law. Central to their case is the issue of what level of diplomacy, immunity, Mrs. Scholas actually had and his family had, if any at all. Her husband was an intelligence official at the RAF Crompton, but did not appear on the list of diplomats in the UK with immunity. Mm, he didn't appear on that list. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Seeger also has invited U.S. President Donald Trump to have a conversation with the family about this issue. If meeting with the President Trump would help us get a step closer to seek justice for Harry to get justice for that boy who died that night needlessly, one of the most wonderful kids in our community, then that's what it takes, then I will extend an invitation now to President Trump, he said. <laughs> 